Hey everyone, how you doing? Um, so you can see my uh, telescope uh, sitting out there. Um, I want to um, just discuss um, how good this damn thing is, even in a light polluted city. Now, I've seen all over forums people saying uh, these scopes are, say, a uh, big scope is no good in the city, uh, it's too much light pollution, and you're not going to have a good view. Um, that I don't think that's correct. Um, this is the first night I'm using this. It's an old Mead light bridge, 16 inch. Um, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. There might be more light pollution in some ways. In other ways, you're getting a lot more light. So you're actually getting a lot more resolution. Orion Nebula, a lot clearer than with the eight inch. Brighter so bright wow not used to this i've been using the 8 inch for like 20 years or more and to switch get, step up to this telescope um i'm kind of impressed um people have said that oh there's not much difference in the city that's not true with the orion nebula green in the middle pink on the peripheries i didn't see that in the 8 inch i don't believe i've ever seen uh, pink in the Orion Nebula before with the 8 inch. I've just seen different types of blue So it looks very different very different indeed. So that I was impressed with that. I pointed it at Cirrus. Now that's damn bright um, The dog star damn bright uh, It's pretty bright Yeah, Cirrus very bright for this scope the bright, the the nearest brightest, uh, sorry, it's the brightest star in the sky. With this telescope, it's like wow! It's like you feel like you literally feel like you're approaching the solar system. So it's really interesting. Um, haven't had a chance for the high magnification on Jupiter, but it did look a little bit more clearer. I, I have to work at still had a collimate scope. It's out of collimation, but still, I could see some decent detail on Jupiter. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, 47 Tucana. Now it's spectacular in an 8 inch. Yes, it is. Even in the city. Yes, it is. But through this, it looks very different. Um, all the stars in it look a bit red for some reason. Um, in addition, what I've noticed is that, um, wow, you can, you, you get the feeling you can just resolve it to the core if you magnified it enough. Um, it, it looks incredible. I was like, whoa, it looks very different. Very different indeed to, f to how it looks through the 8 inch. The 8 inch, it looks brilliant. Um, the stars are kind of white. Here they have a bit more color to them because you have that more light and that more resolution. You can start to see the reds. And um, a lot, in fact, most of them look, look a bit red to me. You see an inner explosion and then you see an outer explosion. It looks incredible. Um, so, wow, that, that wowed me. Um, another thing that's wowing me is the diamonds and rubies near the Carina Nebula. The Carina Nebula, um, I call it the sub... To, to, to help northern people understand what it is. It's basically bigger than the Orion Nebula, which is huge. <laughs> but it's the Southern Skies version of the Orion Nebula. And um, you guys don't have it up north, but it's, it's quite nice. But it's kind of hard to see. It's not as bright as the Orion Nebula, but it's big. Um, nearby is this cluster called the Diamonds and Rubies. Um, that looks much better than through the 8-inch. Like, wow. Just that amount of light. It looks amazing. So, um, based on all these things I'm telling you, um, don't be put off. Now, I'm going to have to get it on the trolley and push it back to the back inside the garage later, which is, it's unwieldy as hell, but it, it's okay if you can just push it in and out. You don't want to be carrying it around and assembling and reassembling. If you, if you can push it in a trolley, you're okay, you're good. I'm really impressed with this scope. I almost feel like staying up all night with it to, um, to keep using it. Um, like, wow, it's really nice. <laughs> um, so, so 8 inch versus 16 inch in the city. Now, the, the skies here are Bortle, I'm in Melbourne, the skies here are probably Bortle 7. Parts of Melbourne are Bortle 9, which is the max, probably in the city, you can't see nothing. Uh, here it's probably around 7, maybe 6, 7. Pretty bad, 
like really bad, but you can still see so damn much. You know, it's not the country, but I mean, like, what can we do? You know, there's, there's neighbors all around with the lights on all night. Do you see that neighbor there with the, with the, um, uh, just, just, uh, just to the right and he's got the damn things he's got the damn lights set up um <laughs> just to the right of the scope and there's another one in front uh towards the back of the property there's some townhouses behind the property and they got the bathroom lights going on all night uh another neighbor he's set up a dam um to the left he's set up a like because there's units next door and he's set up a Lights are going on and off all night long on his car because he's paranoid as hell. He's also got floodlights if I get too close. So I didn't put the scope too close. So, you know, I can't walk in my backyard and the lights go off, you know. <laughs> anyway, this used to be like a, the edge of Melbourne back in the 60s, 70s. And now it's uh, in, a, now it's in, a, in a suburb. Uh, but there you go. Um, so don't be put off. 8-inch um, versus... Look, I've been using the 8-inch F5 Dobsonian for about or 10 years or so, uh, sorry, 10 to 20 years, nearly 25 years. But um, with this, I've been using this one, you know, just for tonight. It's the first time I've used it. Bought it a few weeks ago, had to had to fix it up a bit and um, had to wait for the, you know, the clear skies. And it's really beautiful. So those guys saying the light pollution is too bad to use. Yeah, they're wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. Melbourne has 5 million people. Those people are wrong. Okay, so maybe it's just my eyes. Um, but it's just like with everything in astronomy, it's all subjective. It depends on the person, depends on their conditions. And it depends on the opinion they've formed with the equipment they're using. Um, with the 8-inch, I really saw, even noticed there was a Carina Nebula there. It depended on the eyepiece I was using. Um, with the with the 50 times magnification plus all I noticed it was quite evident and quite beautiful with a hundred times you barely notice it for some reason um, so it depends on the eyepiece as well um, it depends on a lot of things so yeah um, so you know I just wanted to, to say uh, it's very impressive very impressive indeed happy to see the color in the Orion Nebula I can't wait to take it into the countryside one day so yeah look yeah it works in the city of course it collects more light. What do you expect? It's going to have a better image. Of course it will. And for the planets, of course it will. So, yeah, don't be put off. Don't say, oh, you're eight inch in the city. I mean, you know, it's fine to have this. I think I've talked enough. Like, I can go on all night. Anyway, cheers. Okay, so now the butt. Um, right. So... I think we've debunked some of the myth. Um, here it is set up in the backyard. I think we've debunked some of the myth that um, it's not useful. It is. Um, later I looked at Omega Centauri and the moon was rising. And yeah, I thought, you know, this is not bad. Uh, but it does look similar to the 8-inch. Um, but the moon was rising up behind it on the horizon. So, you know, there's that. Um, yes, you can see, see more stuff with this. It is brighter. Yes, it might amplify the light pollution as well, but the fact is I'm seeing a different view to what I saw with the 8-inch. And I think it's a better view. Um, I'm also using better uh, Mead 2-inch um, eyepieces that I've never had access to before, had the plus all eyepieces. Um, okay, so that's not the problem. The problem isn't the light pollution, because you're going to see better views of planets in the city. You're going to see, um, you're going to see color in the Orion Nebula, a bit of color. What's the problem? The problem is the size of this thing. Now, I'm nearly six foot two, and I struggle with this. Um, when I was packing up just now, I was trying to push it. You see that back door of that uh, back garage there? I was trying to push it through that door. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, there's a bit of a depression there, but um, so I had to take it to the front garage, um, and I've just packed it up now. But um, and the thing takes up a lot of space as well. That's another problem. Do you have all this uh, space? You know, um, that's another issue. So, um, yeah, the thing is, you know, I use the bungee cords and that trolley to push it back. But, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, do you have the space? And, um, yeah, is it worth it to have all this extra telescope 
just for a better view. Look, I tell you what, it's been a lot of fun actually finally using a 16-inch telescope. I've always dreamed of what, what does a view look like through a bigger telescope. And now I'm starting to see what I'm starting to understand what a view through a better telescope looks like. Um, is it worth the hassle of pushing this thing around? This thing is massive to push around on the trolley. Um, yeah, I don't think you want to be doing it. Um, so to be honest, I can't recommend it. This is only for serious. If you're a serious astronomer, yes, go for it. If you're a newish astronomer, forget about it. Get a six inch or eight inch. With a scope of that size, a Dobsonian, you can just flip it around easy or even a four inch. You can flip it around easy. You can put it on the table. You can do whatever you want. You can carry it. You can, you can move it from one part of the sky to another in a snap. With this, um, and something that Ting mentioned in his reviews, with a bigger scope, you move around the sky slowly. You don't rush because you have to readjust your, your, your bar stall. You have to readjust um, your, your position. Everything changes. And then there's the thing I've noticed, and I saw this mentioned on forums as well, um, it's, it's not just pushing it to a site um, that's the trouble. Um, another problem is because it's, much, it, it, it's as big as you are, or bigger, you have to move around it. You have to use more energy to move around it, so you get more exercise. Um, you have to use more energy to move it in the first place, to adjust it. And you do get the feeling of using a big telescope. You reach around to, to get the handle and then push it around. There's a huge tube in front of you. And if you want to find an object, um, there's you have to move more than you would with a small telescope. So you do get more exercise as well. And you're moving it around it more as well because you're moving around it to get to where the tub with the eyepieces are moving around it to get to this place, to that place. You're more active. So this is for the serious astronomer, not for the beginner. The beginner, you know, even me, I was happy to stick with the 8-inch for the rest of my life. I don't know why I bought this, to be honest, but I just wanted to, I just thought it was cheap, and I've always wanted one, so I thought I'll just try it. Um, it, is, it is fun to use. It is nice. Um, yeah, look, there's there's really nothing. Let me see. Uh, oops. There I am using it happily. Um, yeah, it's 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 it, it is good fun, but it's for the serious person. This is a scope for someone who wants the planetary detail, the sharp planetary detail, and for someone who wants to see more stars, for someone who wants to see color in the Orion Nebula and who knows maybe color in other nebulas or starting to see color in other nebulas at a dark, dark sky site but in the city yes you can see the color in the Orion Nebula and that's what it's for but it's also for things like faint things the faint fuzzies the galaxies so I, I want to see some Hickson objects which are, I think galactic clusters or something I'd like to see those but you have to go into the deep country. Fortunately, we have that here in Victoria where it is kind of dark. The light pollution is affecting everywhere already, despite only having 6 million people in the state or 7 million, but um, it's still not too bad compared to, say, all of Europe, most of North America. The light pollution is kind of low here. It's, it's kind of like uh, African levels. So that's a good thing. Anyway, I think I've uh, probably put you to sleep, so well, I'm just going to stop talking rubbish now, and you can uh, get back to it. But yeah, this is just for the... Look, it's not... The light pollution is not the problem for a larger telescope. The problem is pushing it around, storing it somewhere, um, and uh, and just learning how to use something so big. Uh, yeah, this is for the serious astronomer people. Anyway, but that's what we do. Cheerio!